On this episode of Exploring the Coast with Hannah, we're going to be looking at how to identify different intertidal species found right here in Monterey Bay. Anemones are some of the most common tide pool species you'll see here in Monterey Bay. Here we have the giant green anemone and the sunburst anemone. When the anemones are open, you can see what we like to call the oral disc. And on the sunburst anemone, they actually have radiating lines on their oral disc, while the giant green do not. Those radiating lines look like the sun's rays, and so therefore it gives the name sunburst anemone. So how do you identify these anemones when they're closed? If we look here at the giant green anemone, we can see that it has an avocado-like texture as well as a flared base. Sunburst anemones do not have a flared base, and instead of having an avocado texture, they actually have these bumps that are called tubercles that are in rows and columns that surround the body, giving it more of a pickle-like texture. Aggregating anemones can be a little tricky to identify because many times we mis-ID them for juvenile, giant green, or sunburst anemones. However, these anemones are much smaller and are usually only five centimeters in diameter or smaller. They often cover themselves with small shells and sand and can form dense aggregations, giving them their name. A fun fact, individuals and groups can be clones and are completely identical to one another. Here we're going to look at a picture to show you the differences in identifying a solitary anemone like the giant green or the sunburst anemone and then seeing how it differs from the aggregating anemone. So on the bottom left hand corner you can see that this is a solitary anemone that is much bigger than five centimeters in diameter and if we look at it given the observations we learned previously it has an avocado texture and a flaring base meaning that it is a giant green anemone. You can see these smaller anemones again in dense aggregations and their sizes are five centimeters in diameter or smaller meaning that these are the aggregating anemones. We are now going to have a quiz to see if you're able to identify the differences between a sunburst anemone and a giant green anemone. So what's A? You guessed it, sunburst anemone has those radiating lines on the oral disc. Let's look at B. Now this anemone is closed. It has the avocado-like texture. As you can see, it also has a flaring base. What anemone is it? You got it, it's the giant green anemone. What about C? This is also a giant green anemone. The other picture showed it closed. This is one that is open and you can see on the oral disc there are no radiating lines. Now here's a little trickier one. What do you think this one is? This is the sunburst anemone. So since it's closed and has the shells on it, it's a little hard to see, but it has the tubercles or those raised bumps in those columns and rows surrounding the body. And it also doesn't have a flaring base. Great job. Mussels are bivalve mollusks with two shells. The shells can be black and blue in color. They can form dense beds. The California sea mussel can form beds that extend from the mid-tide zone to the low-tide zone in some areas. The chief enemies of these large mussels are sea stars, but humans also harvest mussels sometimes in large quantities. Titans are also mollusks, and they are oval in shape and have eight separate overlapping plates, and usually a fleshy skirt. The plates allow them to fit into small nooks and crannies in or on rocks to hide. They can be many different colors. They are also easily overlooked because they are small and well camouflaged. Limpets are snail-like mollusks with one shell. The shell is cone-shaped or flat, and they have the profile of that of a mountain. Their shells can be different sizes, colors, and different textures, like smooth or ribbed. 
and you can find them usually in the mid to high zone areas of the rocky intertidal. Turban snails are one of the most common snails along the coast here in Monterey Bay and are very abundant in the high and mid tide zone of the rocky intertidal. These snails are herbivores that graze on algae. Their shells are smooth with deep purple, black, and brown colorations, usually with a copper colored top. Whelks are predatory snails that feed on other snails and barnacles. They feed by drilling holes with their tongue-like appendage called a ratula into the shells. As you can see here, the coiled shells can be lots of different colors. Both ends of the shells are pointed. This is a, an important characteristic so is that you don't mis-ID them from other snails. Remember the turban snail we just talked about as a smooth rounded shell with only one point. If you look closely, you can see these perfectly drilled holes in these clam shells. And on to the right hand side, you can actually see what that tongue like appendage, which we call radula looks like in some whelk species. Some people may even say it looks alien like. Ready for another quiz? Can you tell me what A is? You got it. Those are mussels. Let's look at B. Smooth rounded top shell with only one point. It's gotta be a turban snail. All right, let's look at C. What do you think C is? C is a limpet. Great job. Now let's look at D. What is D pointing to? Those would be whelks. Remember, they have the two points on their shell. Ochre sea stars are considered a keystone species in intertidal habitats. They feed mainly on mussels, but will also feed on barnacles, snails, limpets, and chitons. Adult ochre sea stars have few predators, but may be eaten by sea otters and gulls. They are orange, brown, or purple in color and have white spines that form a star shape in the center of the sea star. Purple sea urchins are most common in the low tide zone in the rocky intertidal. These urchins often live in protective beds and cavities in the rock that the growing urchins enlarge with their teeth and spines. Color is one of the last things you want to use to ID species, and sometimes individuals of one species can vary in color. Case in point, if you look at the photo on the top right hand corner, that is actually a purple sea urchin. But when they're in their juvenile stages, they actually are green in color. Sea lettuce are a type of algae that are bright green and have oval shaped blades. The blades are very thin, almost transparent because they are only two cell layers thick. Fun fact, like lettuce, it can be eaten in soups and salads. This species is often used as an indicator of high disturbance, such as trampling. Surf grasses are the only true flowering plant that are found in the rocky intertidal. They get the name surf grass because they look just like blades of grass. Their blades are long and narrow and often bright green. They are found in the low tide zone and often in channels. Usually you do not see surf grasses unless we have extreme low tides and they also provide a lot of habitat for a lot of different intertidal species. Iridescent algae have large oval shaped blades and can appear dark purple, greenish, or brown. They can also have reproductive bumps on the blades. This occurs seasonally. If you touch it and pull it gently, the blade should bounce back like a rubber band. Fun fact, the light provides this algae surface with its brilliant iridescence. Sometimes looks like a rainbow. A word of caution when you're out in the intertidal, this is definitely an algae you want to avoid walking on because it can be very slippery when wet. 
When you are out tide pooling, please be mindful of a few things. Always keep an eye on the water. Never turn your back to the ocean. Please be aware of your surroundings, including the water and waves, slippery rocks or algae, and of course, tide pool animals. Please step carefully. Avoid crushing animals, algae, and plants whenever possible. Always be gentle. Always touch lightly so you don't disturb inner tidal life. Please leave them where you found them. Do not try to pull or pry anything off the rocks. Take only pictures. Avoid wading in tide pools. Please give marine mammals space. Remain at least 50 yards away from them at all times. And lastly, have fun as you explore the intertidal ecosystem when it is permitted and safe to do so. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget, a new video of Exploring the Coast with Hannah drops every Tuesday at 11 a.m. on the Pacific Grove Museum of Natural History's website on the Museum to You page.